Hello. Hi. So crazy. I was just watching you on the computer screen and now you're right here. It's like magic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How's it going? Pretty good. How are you today? Good. Thank you so much for joining me virtually. Have you been doing a lot of these like Instagram lives going live? Uh, not a lot of them. Just like, you know, a few sporadically here and there, but yeah. not a lot of them. Yeah. Are you in New York right now? Yeah, yeah. I'm uptown. Oh, nice. Okay. I don't know if you can hear me. Can you hear me? Because there's a party happening like right outside of my building. There's like kids. And, and they didn't invite us. I'm a little, I feel a little like <laughs> left out. But no, you sound great. I can hear you. Okay, good. I want to kind of uh, kick things off today. You're not only like an incredible artist, but your music is filled with just like messages of hope and love and no pun intended, liberation. Um, <laughs> I want, was wondering if you can kind of take us back to the beginning and tell us about your journey with jazz. It's very clear that jazz and being a musician is your calling. So if you can kind of, you know, tell us how you figure that out and who some of your early inspirations were. Um, well, I'm a PK. So I started singing in church, PK preacher's kid. Um, and I, I got started like really, really young. And I didn't really like jazz when I first got started. You know, um, <laughs> my mom has a, like, I remember saying um, to my, my mom and my grandfather, like, oh, I don't want to hear that. That's old folks music, you know. Uh, <laughs> and it was kind of disrespectful, not only to the art form, but a little bit to my name. But I was like seven, eight years old, you mm -hmm. know. Um, but then I, you know, I joined choir all throughout elementary school and high school and junior high school. Um, and when I got to high school, there was a jazz choir and then in, in the public school that I went to and I joined. And then when I went to the performing arts high school that I went to, um, I had a couple of teachers who said, your name is Jasmia, Jasmia Horn at that. Like, how can you not be, um, a jazz singer? Like, you don't know anything about jazz. So they gave me some CDs and some music to listen to and talk to me about why, you know, the music and the history of the music is important. And I, you know, at first I didn't really like it. And then I heard Sarah Vaughn mm -hmm. and I was like, who is this woman? What is this sound? What mm -hmm. is this feeling that I'm getting that I've never had before? And why do I feel so great? And how can I do this? And so I started to imitate everything that she did. Mm -hmm. um, one, because it was really hard for me to find in the mainstream, like at the time, like I was born in the 90s, early 90s. So, um, you know, Brandy, Aaliyah, Alicia Keys, uh, Britney Spears, you know, there weren't a lot of singers who had the same register and tone as me. And so when I found Sarah Vaughn, I was like, oh, so it can be raspy, it can be mm. sassy, you know, it can be really sweet and pure, but it can be very, you know, gritty as well. And like, I felt like I wanted to explore all of those different realms and I just couldn't find anyone that kind of had the same type of reference. Um, and so like, I literally, like all of her transcriptions, the, the albums that she did with Clifford Brown, everything that there was to find, I found it and I studied it. Um, and I kind of became like a, you know, Sarah Vaughn protege up until I won the Sarah Vaughn competition. And the judges were like, like, this is great. We chose you because you have potential and you're awesome. But now that you've won this competition, like, you know, it was Al Jarreau, Dee Dee Bridgewater, um, Christian McBride, um, Mrs. McBride. And it was really like everyone was saying, like, yeah, you, you sound great. But why don't you go to the next step? You know, like Sarah Vaughn is, has already existed. It's time for you to walk in your own path as Jasmia Horn. Um, so I kind of stopped, you know, I, I got rid of, I didn't get rid of her music, but I like listened to so many other things to kind of get her out of my head, like something completely different. Like I started listening to Ornette Coleman mm. and Booker Little. I love trumpet players. So I was listening to a lot of trumpet players, um, Pharaoh Sanders, you know, some other music, Jackie McLean, to kind of get away from like what I was hearing and interpreting from Sarah. I had enough of her vocabulary and I started to listen to um, other musicians. Mm -hmm. And that's how I actually found Betty Carter, mm -hmm. who was like the another. You know, yeah. <laughs> and so I, I started to 
write my own compositions because I like I heard tight and I was like, oh, she wrote this. This isn't like a jazz standard. This isn't something that some guy wrote who and they didn't put it in a book. You know, this is not a standard. This is her like being her herself. And I really got inspired by that. So I started to like kind of own my own stage presence and sound and vibe and, you know, kind of find myself in that way. She really inspired me to do that. Yeah. yeah. Now I have a question for you too, because I, I see, and I hear a lot of this people saying like, you know, after you, you know, you're done with the show and you have all these audience members coming up, they're so excited to meet you. And they go, you remind me just, just this person. You're just like Betty Carter. You're just like Sarah Bond. Does it ever bother you? Because yes, you have these amazing influences. And as you said, you know, you were so influenced by these incredible women and you know, these musicians, does it bother you ever when people like compare you to other artists? Uh, kind of mm -hmm. like not so much like now I'm, I'm kind of over it but there was a while when everyone used to compare me to Erica Badu and I don't think it's because the, I don't think it's because of the way that I sing I think it's more because I'm from Dallas we went to the same high school mm -hmm. I carry an unk and I wear a head wrap you know and a lot of people are not you know versatile or really a lot of people don't really understand African anthropology or African American dress or wear style culture um, because it isn't really solidified, you know, like in history books and stuff. So it, it kind of, you know, sometimes it can be off putting when people, you know, would say that to me. But after a while, you know, I just started to embrace it. Anyone that they told me that I was like, you know, it, it really offended me when they told me that I reminded them of Erica Badu because I felt like, you know, you guys aren't really listening to my music. You're just going based upon what I look like and my style. Putting you in a box. Which, for you. Yeah. Right. And it wasn't fair, but I kind of just accepted the fact that like people are going to say after a while, people who don't really listen to jazz, but they've heard like a few Ella Fitzgerald albums or Sarah Vaughn, they would be like, oh, you remind me like just like Ella. And I'm like, you like clearly don't I can't even get offended like you that's the only person that you know right and so you're using that so it's like, like after you're just like Miles Davis you're like okay right like no <laughs> um so after a while I kind of got I mean I got over it and you know it's I embrace it now I just say thank you and you know refer them to like different albums or you know whatever and just move on with life so yeah it's fine it's a good way to look at that and yeah kind of transitioning into just being a woman, especially a woman of color in the music industry. What, can you talk a little bit about what your transition, turning your passion for music into a full-time job and also some of your challenges in the music industry, not, you know, off stage as well? Um, well, I'm a mother, I'm a single mom. Mm -hmm. So um, that's been really difficult. Um, well, post like pre COVID, Things were were not as I don't even want to say not as bad because things have been a lot better. Like I'll say this, COVID has really given me a lot of time to um, develop like the book that I just wrote, develop a course, um, spend more time with my children. I created a whole curriculum for them to like be in homeschool, and I have the opportunity to spend more time with them versus when I was always on the road or if they were on the road with me. Mm -hmm. You know, it, we would go straight to sound check, and they'd have to go to the hotel room with the au pair, and I wouldn't have that much time to like spend with them or go like to certain trips. And I would only take them if I'm in a specific place. Um, at a long like at a specific time so if I'm doing a European tour and I'm in like Greece for two days Italy for two or three days Spain for you know two or three days then I would take them because it's it's not as you know um, stress stressful for their bodies but like this past year 2019 I was in a different place like almost every day yeah you were touring it a lot, lot. It was a lot on my body and it was a lot for the children because I was always, I was always away from them. Mm -hmm. um, but my mom was like really supportive. I have aunts um, that are back home in Dallas that were really supportive. And what I would do is just leave them with my aunts in the daytime because my mom was working. And then at nighttime, leave them with um, my mom and things were fine. You know, they got to be around family and all of my family's in Texas and never really wants to come to New York because I really just don't like, you know, the West Coast. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sorry, the East Coast. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, having them there was great because they got to, like their cousins are their age and they really like got to be with family, which is really great. 
but then I missed them. Like I didn't get a chance to see them. So like, that's one of the things that, you know, was really hard for me, like mm -hmm. 2018 and 19. Cause I got my album, um, a social call was nominated for a Grammy in 17. Once that happened, I mean, with the competitions, like the, the Sarah Vaughan competition and the Thelonious Monk competition, both did re like really boosted my career in ways that had never been boosted before. But then to have like a global recognition of like, a Grammy nomination or like this year, an NAACP award, things just, the phones were just ringing off the hook. You know, I couldn't really keep people away. Thank God I have a booking agency who's like very supportive and very hands on because mm -hmm. things were like really starting to get difficult for me. And in the beginning, like when I won the Sarah Vaughan competition, the Monk competition, there I didn't have this team. Like right now I have a, a complete team of people that help me to get to where I want to go in my career and we strategize together. But before I one didn't look at myself as a business. And two, there was no strategy or no plan. Like I was literally just calling all the festivals on my own, um, booking things on my own, doing my graphic design, my web design, everything was on my own. But I also didn't have the children. It was just myself and my husband and we kind of just supported each other in that way. Um, and I was able to play gigs and teaching and everything was great because I didn't have a, a complete family to like support. Um, but then after a while, things just got to be really difficult, like being a mother and, you know, trying to do all of those things on my own. So it was really great that my career, you know, took off so that I actually would have, um, you know, a team to help me build that stable foundation so that I could grow and transform in the way that I desire to. Um, mm. But it's been it has not been easy. <laughs> it has not been easy, um, especially as a woman of color, like. People don't really take me seriously until they, you know, until they see, um, which was one of the reasons why I wanted to compose my or use a lot of my compositions for Love and Liberation as opposed to singing standards. Um, because it's like, OK, guys, I'm actually a musician. You know, I'm not just a singer just singing these songs and, and no disrespect to singers who only sing songs or standards that are already written. I think everybody have has their divine purpose in the universe and that's totally fine. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to do something different with my career and my life. Um, and so like that was a part of my method to my madness like I wanted to make an impact on women who are composers on like youth the youth people that are younger than me who are coming up and they're like oh well I don't want to sing standards I want to write my own songs and so I kind of am in a place where I love standards and I but I also am very open and you know welcoming to people developing their own sound and who they are within bringing that outside of them so mm -hmm. i kind of write stand, write songs that sound like standards so that way i'm like these are my original compositions but you can also you know you can stay right. true to the tradition as well um so that's kind of like where i'm coming from with that and it's it's been fun. It's been really fun, like to get the interaction of musicians like Wynton Marsalis or musicians like Jeff Tane Watts who play with Betty Carter, mm -hmm. um, Cyrus Chestnut, Jason Moran, who have all called me, you know, even before the Grammys, you know, was a thing. Like they would call me and say, I really love what you're doing. Like keep up the good work. Mark Carey, Diane Reeves, Dee Dee Bridgewater. They would all call me. Personally, some of them, I don't even know how they got my number, but they got my number <laughs> and they would just say, like, keep doing what you're doing because this is like, this is great. Um, and just that alone is like their little like mustard side seeds that like grow and develop, mm. you know, a part of me. It's, it's very inspiring to hear from them because I'm technically walking on their shoulders. You know, women like Dee Dee Bridgewater and Diane Reeves and um, Renee Marie, Vanessa Williams. You know, I'm I am in the now um like going to be where, you know, as successful as they were when they were just coming up or just coming out and just developing their careers. And they've kind of paved the way for me already. So it's really beautiful to like hear from them and, you know, experience their grace and their um, impressions of, of my artistry. You are so inspirational. You're just like as a human, <laughs> like you would just, you're incredible. Um, now, you. you talk a lot about, you know, the business side of it. And you no, you know, you did it all yourself, like you said. Yeah. Now, it's just kind of stuff that you'll be teaching during your course and in your book. You can talk a bit about both of those and how people can get okay. them and what they're about. Cool. Um, yeah, so the Jazz Horn Vocal Initiative is... Um, a collective or an initiative that I created because I wanted vocalists, men, women, females, others 
whoever, like, however you are, whoever you are as a person, as a human, to be able to come into this group and identify yourself and your sound and be able to utilize your voice to speak about what that is and what that means to you. Mm. And I wanted it to be a safe place because I've communed with so many women, the jazz wives of these musicians, a lot of the prominent musicians, and I've communed with people who are not the wives of jazz musicians, who are just musicians of their own, you know, like Ingrid Jensen, who's a great trumpeter, um, Lauren Sevian, who is a saxophonist, baritone saxophonist, Camille Thurman, you know, I've just gotten together with some of these women and said, like, how do you feel about the stuff that's happening on the scene? And like, what's our voice? Like, how can we actually, you know, speak out about what's happening other than in our music? Like, we should get together and brainstorm and have like some collective conversations Um and sometimes a lot of those women, because they have their own careers, were so busy that they never, like, you know, pre-COVID, they, it was really hard to get all of us together in the same room. But then there were students and, like, young women who looked up to me who would say, you know, send me a message on Instagram and say, I really want to sing for your mind. Or I really like your arrangement of Up Above My Head. Like, how can I, you know, get a copy of that? And so I, like, basically just created this book and put all of that in here. So all of my charts, all of my transcriptions, um, I talk about building your brand, I talk about stage presence, I talk about what it means to be a vocalist. When I graduated um, from the new school, and I don't think this is just a thing that's happening with the new school, I think this is a lot of universities in general, they don't really have a lot of respect for the African American experience as a vocalist, right? So I feel like the vocalists are like on the short bus Versus all the musicians are like flying in private jets, you know, like we're on like, mm. I just, they have us in like these remedial classes, because if you think about like history and what has happened over time with classical music, musicians and singers alike have been trained for years and years and years. But because jazz music is a, it comes from an uh, African American background, there there was no training. You know, our anthropology and languages were stripped from us. You think about Congo Square, where all we had was our drums, um, or all of our ancestors had was their drums, and it's like. You know, that is a part of this journey. And a lot of institutions really kind of exclude that and they focus on harmony and theory and all of those things. So the initiative and the book and the course kind of go together because I'm also like in the course I'm teaching about the history, a little bit about the history, but also how to really strive from within, which is the name of the book. It's called Strive From Within because I'm teaching you my approach, you know. I developed the four elements of focus is what I like to call them. And basically they're like these four elements that are like goals of mine and also tools that I've utilized to help me manifest, bring forth whatever it is in life that I want. So not just in music, you know, if there's a song that I'm singing or there's a competition that I want to win, or if there is, you know, like, I don't know, my rent's behind and I want to utilize a project to, you know, life, literally life, because that's really what jazz is about, you know, like, getting through playing the changes you know and life changes life has variations of changes and you just have to know how to play them and it really just depends on who you are inside as an individual and how you approach those changes so i kind of share that um in the book i'm i'm talking about the four elements one is storytelling um two is stage presence so my stage is my altar three is sing your own song and four is everybody's got style. So building your brand and what that means and like why I chose to have an LLC versus a sole proprietorship. So that kind of stuff is in the book. Um, I have something that I call the career wheel. And I'm just talking about basically how the hub of the wheel is the place where the artist lays and how the spokes are the w of the wheel or how um, the team or the people around you connect you to your audience. So if you think of a wheel, you know, the hub is the artist and then the spokes are the people who keep you connected to that wheel, which is, you know, your community, your fan base. And then the faster that the wheel churns, like the faster that it goes, the more spokes you're going to need to keep that together. Um, so mine kind of, I kind of started off with management. I started off with, um, a booking agency, a lawyer, those kinds of things, you know, as the spokes of the wheel. And then eventually my career started moving along and I needed more people. So one of the things that I did was I let my manager go and I hired people to fill her position. So mm. um, instead of like paying one person 20 percent, 
I split that up into four different people. So like a content manager, project manager, you know, different people who could manage different parts of my career versus managing one thing. And then everybody's cool with the 5% versus like overwhelming this one person to do all of these things. Cause it's 2020. Like it's not really realistic to have a manager to do that kind of thing for you. Right. Um, especially if, you know, as times are changing, things are evolving. Um, so I just talk about that. Like there's so much information in the book about, you know, business and branding, but also the history of the music and, you know, talking about style and where you come from and where the music um, has come from and how it's developed. So it's like all of the above. Um, yeah i can't encourage everyone to go out and read it get it order it online Thank you. or yeah. wherever i mean there's so many there's so many great artists out there i mean you go into um, when live music was still a thing go into any jazz club any like bar in new york or you know in, in in any city and you can find an incredible musician but it's that how do you get to the next step and how do you take your your talent and use that in like the next steps in doing that. So can you just share the name of the book and your, and the, where to find it and yes. all those things when we're, yes. Drive from within. And look at that cover. <laughs> Thank you. And it's got, I mean, it has all of like my transcriptions are here. So this is like when I say my vocal transcription for that. And then the beautiful thing about this book is it doesn't have like, the Library of Congress has all of my original charts and I didn't send them in um, through Sibelius or Fernale. Like I, I hand write all of my charts. So you're literally getting like my actual handwriting um, instead of like, you know, some generic form of, of text mm -hmm. and font. And then there are other things like that career wheel that I was talking to you about. It's also here as well the hub and then the spooks this is like and this is an entry from my private journal like i have a, a journal called an awareness journal and it just helps me to keep up with my life so what i've done in my past where i am right now today and what i plan to do later and this is like one of the experts from that journal um and then you know i have other things in the book as well that um have aided in my like helped me to get where i where i am as well this is like a collage it's a style collage and i basically talk about like what i how i see myself so there's like a i don't know if you can see it well but there's like me performing there with my baby she was six months old oh. and i was performing i did a whole two-hour gig and i talk about that in the book as well like how people were just really mean to me like when i showed up to the gig and you know there i could hear like old biddy saying how dare she show up with that baby like what's she gonna do um and like how hard it was for me to get to that place and you know like what t types of things were happening in my life at at the time um yeah i share like all of those personal experiences in the book so it's kind of it's semi like autobiography but it's not the end all be all like one day i will write something um you know some kind of book in that form um but it shares like my experiences and it's comprised with like my original compositions and stuff like that and transcriptions so Amazon, uh, Barnes and Noble, Kindle. It's literally on available on every platform you can Amazing. think of. Just Google yeah. it and the world will yep. find it where, <laughs> where they should find it. And it's interesting because what something I really admire about you on the list of like a million things is the use of like manifestation. But what I see a lot about talk, people talking about manifestation, it's like, if you think it'll happen, but it's like, you're thinking you have goals. Mm -hmm. And yeah. what your subconscious is then leading you to those goals. So it's really interesting to the way that you're using, you know, spirituality and manifestation in, you know, so much of what you do, but like as, you know, actual actions. It's it's yeah. positive, beautiful Thank thing. And I want anyone who's watching right now, please, we have a couple minutes left. If you have any questions for Jasmine, I know a lot of people are asking where you could purchase your book, which we said, Google it, please. It is all over the place, wherever you want to read it. I did also want to ask you while people are, are typing questions there. Um, could you share with us one of your most cherished uh, musical memories or experiences? Maybe oh, something shit. that happened that you use maybe when you're feeling down to drive you. Uh, so Jazz at Lincoln Center has rehearsals. Um, like in, in the daytime, like uh, the big band would have rehearsals. The mm -hmm. orchestra would have rehearsals. And uh, I remember John Hendricks was playing with the big band. Mm. Do you remember that show? Yeah. It was probably like... What year was that? Like 
2011 or something. Mm -hmm. It was a long time ago. But I was just coming up on the scene and um, I was stud I was studying with um, not Pinecone Gardner, Vincent Gardner, mm. trombonist. And I was studying at the new school, but I was taking private lessons with him. And I was talking to him about like how my improvisation doesn't connect. Like I feel like my bebop lines don't connect. And he was like, you should definitely come and hear the band. Mm. And John Hendricks is playing with us soon and he would love to meet you. And I said, well, I don't know about that. You know, I'm kind of nervous to just walk up in a rehearsal. And right. he's like, well, people know you on the scene. You know, you're, you're winning competitions and things. So just, you know, come in, just drop your head in and check out a rehearsal. And a lot of those rehearsals were open. Um, and so I went one day and he walked up to me and asked me to come up. And he, he said, why are you so well thought of? And I was like, he's like, jazz horn, right? And I'm like, oh my god oh. <laughs> he's like why are you so, so well thought of you. <laughs> and i was like i i don't know he was like well show me and like you know he he has dan start to play a blues on the piano we start playing and kind of rifting off of each other i will never forget that moment you know it was like how does this this is a legend somebody's music that i you know listened to as i was growing up and developing my own style and here he is like literally saying my name it just felt like it was just, it was amazing. I, I, I haven't felt like that ever before. And I don't think I will. God rest his soul. That was like one of my most cherished moments in the music where it was like someone else who is great, who is amazing and has done so much for the community, recognized who I am. It just really, it meant a lot to me. That's, you know, it's interesting. So I talked to a lot of my friends who are either, you know, music lovers, but non-musicians and like, you know, just the whole spectrum of that. And it's, a lot of people kind of assume it's like, oh, it was the biggest show you ever played. And it's more of like when you got like you met someone that you respect right. so much. It's like yeah. they know who you are. And you're like, you, you know me? Yeah. Know me. yeah. <laughs> That's such a magical experience. I saw someone asked if they could order a signed copy of your book. Um, are you in New York? Is that person in New York? Because I probably could have my like assistant. I have like a huge box of the books. books. I could have I could sign it and have my assistant, you know, deliver it to you. I don't know if you can, like, you know, if you order it from Amazon or off of my website, it's definitely not going to be signed. But if, mm -hmm. you know, if you're interested, you know. Well, whoever asked that, I can't remember the handle, but go ahead and you can also, your Instagram handle is the artistry of, the exact handle is. Jess Horn. Yes, of Jess Horn. So you can yeah. slide to DMs, ask her about that. Um, <laughs> Is there, a, oh, I had, I had like one more question, if you don't mind. I know yes, we're almost out of time, mind. but okay. Um, so you kind of talked uh, a bit about this, but maybe some suggestions to anyone that's tuning in. You know, you okay. have really taken this time to, you know, work on so many different projects. Specifically, how did you find joy during this time? And any suggestions, and I'm sure there's a lot of this in your book and in your teachings, how people can right now find joy? Um, for me, like when I had those days where I was like really down, I would just spend time with my children because they are joy. Mm. Um, I think that's a, that's been a blessing for me. Cause I think if I were home alone, I don't, and my children were not here, you know, I think I'd be maybe depressed even, um, during this time. Cause it has been, it's been really difficult. I mean, I have my piano here. I have a drum set. I have a bass, so I could easily invite my friends over and say, hey, guys, let's play from 12 to 2 or something so that we're not waking up the neighbors. But even with that, it's it's not really safe. You know, you don't really know. Um, so I just started to transcribe all those solos that I started singing in high school and learning. Um, I just went back to those because I remember, like, when I first sang Sarah Vaughn's music or when I first listened to John Hendricks or... Um, um, Lambert Hangerton Ross, like when I first checked them out, it was amazing. I was just like, wow, I can do this with my voice. I can do this. You know, it, it gave me hope. And I think there's, we need that right now. A lot of hope for our future and for our society, for our planet. So I think music is like the unit. If you don't speak English and you're from another country, but you hear a song that's in English, it's more about how you feel. And it's more about how the song revives you and moves you as a person, like individually versus like w what you understand because there are things that we can say and understand and explain in music that we can't really explain with any other language 
Um, so I would say don't stop listening. You know, don't stop singing along with the music and transcribing and, you know, finding those musicians whose music and like, how did you fall in love with music? Remember like one of those first albums that you like really listened to as a child? I had to start going back and listening to Weezer listening to system of a down yeah. kill switch engage mm -hmm. um like a lot of those the fray um um what's that what's that band uh when i was a young boy my, my chemical gosh. romance yes yes, yes. I, i've been going back because it's like like when i was in high school that was the thing i didn't know anything right. about jazz you know i didn't yeah. know nothing about jazz and those songs got me through because they were it was those songs are almost like the blues like when you think of it like those mm -hmm. emotional songs it's almost like the blues you're really telling your story and your emotions are coming out in the songs and you know i i went back to some of that music because it's like oh it's comfortable you know it, it made sure. me feel like yeah i'm not the only person that's going through something so mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what it is if it's not jazz it's okay if it's folk if it's gospel if it's rock if it's pop go back to like that very first moment when you fell in love with music and, and listen to those songs again. Yeah. I, amazing advice. And I have to say, I think that we just made history for the first time of anyone singing My Chemical Romance. <laughs> if you're alive, Jessica, et cetera, I'm going to hold this moment close to my heart because that was incredible. I listen to a lot of, uh, I've been listening to a lot of bands that I listened to in high school too. And I'm like, I wonder if I heard them now, I would even be like, connect with them but it's you know right. music music is art everyone interprets it yeah. differently and yep whether you understand it or not but i don't want to take too much more of your time up this has been amazing i could sit here for like hours talking to you so please <laughs> everyone you. give her a follow on instagram buy uh buy jasmine horn's book and it, the online course too is that just you can find all the information on your website yeah artistryofjazzhorn.com slash education all the information is there i've got books i've got a pre you can preview the course before you take it um you can check it out you can hear like testimonials from other people that are currently taking the course or that have taken the course before um yeah artistry of jazzhorn.com slash education amazing thank you so so much thank you. have a magical day a great too and talk thank to you, you soon. so much thank you Bye. Bye.